false prophecies. Now, this is interesting because oftentimes Muslims will point to chapter 30, verses 1 to 5 of the Quran, chapter 30, 1 to 5, <clears throat> specifically verses 1 to 4, as a fulfilled prophecy vindicating that Muhammad is a prophet like the prophets of the Holy Bible. You know, Moses prophesied, Isaiah prophesied, so did the Lord Jesus. However, a careful examination of this passage shows that it's actually a strong proof that Muhammad is a false prophet. Let's look at the passage. Let me break down the implications of the passage and demonstrate why this actually proves that he's a false prophet because it turns out to be a rather unimpressive prophecy that failed. Here it is. Here it is. <clears throat> Defeated have been the Byzantines or the Romans and the lands close by. Yet it is they who, who notwithstanding this their defeat shall be victorious within a few years. For with God rests all power of decision first and last and on that day will the believers too have cause to rejoice in God's uh, strengthening. His power. <clears throat> now, according to the Muslim interpretation, this refers to the Romans being defeated by the Persians in 614 AD. The Persians defeated the Romans. And that Muhammad then prophesied that the Romans eventually will become victorious. However, this passage contains a host of pro problems. Number one, <clears throat> we are not told who defeated the Romans. We are not told where they were defeated. We were not told when they were defeated. Notice what the prophecy again says. Defeated have been the Byzantines or the Romans in the lands close by. Doesn't say who defeated them. Doesn't say which land or lands close by. Nor does it tell us when they were defeated because this information is important because the prophecy goes on to say the Romans will be victorious in a few years. The lack of such information proves that the Quran is an error. The Quran is false. Why? Because according to several passages of the Quran, the Quran is a book that's fully detailed that explains all of its verses thoroughly. Just let me give you two, two references as an example. Chapter 6, verse 114 says this. Chapter 6, verse 114. Shall I seek a judge other than Allah, while it is he who has sent down unto you the book explained in detail? So the Quran says this is a book explained in detail. Now chapter 41, verse 3 says its verses are explained in detail. 41, verse 3. A book whereof the verses are explained in detail. Well, this passage doesn't give a thorough, detailed explanation of its verses. Doesn't tell us who defeated the Romans, where they were defeated, and when they were defeated. So this passage is an illustration that the Quran is mistaken. It's not a book explained in detail. Second problem, and I'll try to make this quick because we got other points. Second problem. The Quran originally was written without vowels. The Quran was written in Arabic in consonants. It's a consonantal text. The vowel markings were added later in order to allow readers to properly understand what this passage is saying. As such, there is actually a variant reading among the extant Quranic manuscripts. Because there are no vowels, some manuscripts read, the Romans have been victorious, and in a few years they shall be defeated. And Muslims took that as a prophecy of the Muslims overcoming the Byzantine Empire. So because it's an Arabic consonantal text, you had two variant readings, one that said the Romans were defeated and will be victorious, another that said the Romans were actually victorious and will be defeated. That latter reading is actually reflected in two modern Quran translations. The Message, a translation of the glor Glorious Quran, and Quran re ref Reformist or Reformist translation, both of which were produced by Quran-only Muslims. They read the passage differently. The Quran, a reformist translation, or reformist translation, and the message, a translation of the glorious Quran. Let me read one of them. The Romans have won. Notice, not defeated. These are modern Quran translations that you can find online and download as PDF files or read online for free. The Romans have won at the lowest part on the earth, but after their victory, they will be defeated. So now which is it? Were they defeated or were they victorious? Shall they be victorious or shall they be defeated? You can't tell heads or tails. Mm -hmm. So far, the prophecy sounds very impressive, right? Mm -hmm. Finally, and more importantly, according to secular and Muslim sources, both secular and Muslim sources say that the Byzantines defeated the Persians decisively between 627 and 628 AD. 627, 628 AD. Now, why is that important? According to Muslim scholars such as Ibn Kathir and Yusuf Ali, the few years of the Quran means anywhere from three to nine years, the Romans would be victorious. Now do the math, David. Muslims say that this prophecy was revealed in 615 AD. And the Romans would be victorious if we assume 
the traditional reading anywhere from three to nine years mm -hmm. after this prophecy. Now let's be generous and take the nine year mark. Mm -hmm. 615 and nine is 624. Mm -hmm. According to Muslim sources, the Romans only decisively defeated the Persians between 627 and 628 AD, and the Persians called for a truce in the year 630 AD. And let me give you a reference. George Ostrogorsky, History of the Byzantine State, pages 101, 104, documents what I just said. So this turned out to be a false prophecy, proving Muhammad is a false prophet. Mm -hmm. 